Hello, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and this is the second episode of my uh, my Brockton Community Access Cable Television Show as Mayor of the City of Brockton. The title is Our Brockton, Our Brockton, and I think that speaks volumes uh, for what our community is going through from a health standard with COVID and the serious uh, devastated health ramifications. As I come to you today, we've lost 247 Brocktonians have passed. And one thing uh, that I was able to do during this serious health uh, pandemic uh, was to hire as a medical consultant, Dr. Rick Herman. And many of you know Dr. Rick Herman from his days as chief of ER at the Brockton Hospital and chief of ER over at uh, Good Samaritan Medical Center as well. And he's just been a wonderful, uh, really, really professional uh, medical expert that's helped us uh, guide through this, um, work with what we're working with right now, working with DPH and of course, Linda Cahill um, over at um, Board of Health. And I, I just thought on a se second episode, I was gonna have Dr. Herman on, and I'll also be joined later on in the show by Superintendent of Schools, uh, Mike Thomas as well. So Dr. Rick, thank you so much for being here. And it's really an honor and a privilege to work with you. And uh, for those that may not know you, Dr. Herman, maybe you could just give a quick synopsis of your background. Sure, thanks for having me on uh, today. Um, so I have been in Brockton for the past 40 years as an emergency physician. I was at Brockton Hospital for 26 years, the last many of which was as the chief of the department there, and then went over to Good Samaritan Medical Center and served as the chief there for about 10 years. For the last few years, uh, I've still worked in the emergency department, but cut back uh, a little bit and have uh, practiced a little bit of uh, telemedicine uh, as well. Um, and uh, happy to help out over the last uh, several weeks with you and with Linda Cahill, the Board of Health, and BIMA, and uh, all of the department heads. It's uh, still getting to know folks, but uh, <clears throat> but um, feel like we've got a good handle on things right now. Uh, I did want to go over some of the data, if that's okay with you. So let me share my screen, and, and, um, <clears throat> and we'll go over um, where we are. This is about as up-to-date data as I can get um, from the Department of Public Health. It says of 4 p.m. last night, which is when they update things, and it says of noon today uh, from the city of Brockton. So just to, again, to set us up at our baseline, we are a city of 95,708 people, and uh, as of yesterday in the United States, uh, 112,000 deaths. So you can see that uh, the order of magnitude of this problem is quite severe on a national level. It's as though the entire city of Brockton had passed away, so it's uh, quite a devastating uh, illness. <clears throat> This is the dashboard that the uh, Department of Public Health puts out. And so the numbers uh, on the right uh, here show that uh, 267 new cases yesterday, 46 deaths. So even though the talk is that everything is on the downslope, everything's moving in the right direction, we're ready to reopen many aspects of our uh, workforce and pleasure, uh, we still have lots of um, disease out there. Uh, and these on the left are the measures that the Department of Public Health is using to measure how well we're doing and gives it either a green, yellow, or red dot to let us know how we're doing. And we're three out of six in the green and no red, so that's good. And what we're trying to do is focus on uh, the city of Brockton and see if we can adapt these same measures to the city to help guide you and uh, other officials in making the decision on moving forward with, uh, with the reopening. <clears throat> so this is, what, um, uh, this is what the prevalence looks like in Massachusetts. And as you can see, both Plymouth County uh, and Essex County, where Lawrence is, are uh, pretty uh, high concentrations of COVID-19, not quite as bad as uh, in Suffolk County, but that's really not Boston, quite honestly, that's Chelsea, where the highest amount of uh, COVID-19 is. And uh, this is, uh, as of yesterday, a breakdown by uh, cities, and you can see that uh, uh, un unfortunately, the deep blue is the higher amount of cases, and so we are uh, 
high, a high uh, concentration of COVID-19. So this measures the case count and also the density. Uh, so a city of 100,000 with over 4,000 cases, that's 4.2% of the population of the city of Brockton has at some point tested positive or presumed positive for COVID-19. And I must say that even though uh, the number there is 4.2%, my <clears throat> sense is, is that it's higher than that because as we know, COVID-19 uh, can present with no symptoms at all, meaning asymptomatic, or with very, very mild symptoms, just like a common cold. And in such cases, uh, if you're asymptomatic, there's no reason why you would be getting tested for the most part. Uh, and in mild cases, uh, also very little chance that you're going to be getting tested. So even though the uh, state has us as having 4.2% of the population infected, my sense is, is that it's actually higher than that. This is what, <clears throat> this is what uh, COVID-19 looks like. So on the left-hand side are, uh, are, are the age groups and how many cases are affected. A lot of people hear that it's just a disease of old people uh, and that young people are not affected at all. And that's not quite exactly true. COVID-19 affects all ages across the board. Okay, so you can see even though uh, 14,000 uh, 80 year old plus were affected, uh, the same number of 40 to 50 year olds were affected as well. It's just that the mortality rate, which is over on the right hand side, is much higher. So the average age of a person who gets COVID-19 is 52 in Massachusetts. The average age of someone who dies from COVID-19 is 82. You can see that the death the actual deaths in someone less than 20, none, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, even under age 50, the chance of death is very, very low compared to the much higher death rate in an older population. So, and, th and this is as of just a few days ago. So these numbers are up to date. This is uh, something that, um, uh, Allison, uh, Allison Pinkover from, Mass, uh, from the uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center has put together and she has a whole series of um, maps that show the distribution within the city of Brockton. This is kind of just a scatter diagram of where cases are located and we're going to be using some of this data mayor and uh, later time to kind of look at how this overlaps with housing income, job status, and kind of figure out where the cases lie in the city of Brockton and see if we can target uh, populations that may be in greater need of education and assistance. This is where we are as of now, as of uh, a few hours ago on June 11th, uh, 2020, 4,147 uh, total cases. Those with still who still have symptoms and we consider to be active cases, 645 active cases currently. And this, uh, one of the other um, uh, indicators that the state follows is the number of patients with COVID-19 who are in the hospital. This graph combines the two uh, acute care Brockton hospitals, not counting the VA, but Good Samaritan and a signature Brockton Hospital, uh, and looks at the number of hospitalizations uh, since the end of April over time up until yesterday. Uh, and as you can see, this trend line, the dotted line, represents uh, where we're going with hospitalizations in the city of Brockton. So it's moving in a uh, great direction. So when, when uh, uh, at the end of April, there were over 200 patients uh, in the hospital. In the hospital, as of yesterday, less than 50. Uh, and uh, the bottom, very bottom line represents cases that are in the ICU, also coming down nicely. So both a number of patients who are hospitalized and the number of sick patients, very, very critically ill patients, I should say, who are in the I ICU are also falling. Very good uh, for the city of Bront. <laughs> this represents total deaths. So if we look at the uh, big brown line going uh, up, uh, this is from the very, very beginning, the end of March, number of deaths has reached a total as of uh, this morning of 247 total deaths. And the, these bars represent a uh, number of deaths each day <clears throat> with a trend line just showing sort of a seven day average on any given day just to smooth things out a little bit. But again, we peaked here kind of in the middle of April when things were very, very bad. And we uh, are slowly, slowly 
um, moving in a downward direction, which is good. This is testing. So uh, we um, another indicator that the state is looking at overall is testing. We have looked at this in many, many different ways. We've looked at the hospital data, neighborhood health uh, uh, center uh, data, combine them all. Uh, but I found that uh, kind of the best way to actually look at what's going on in our city uh, and excluding everyone else that might be coming to the hospital in other areas. This is just uh, data from the Department of Public Health uh, and the zip codes in the city of Brockton. And what it shows is these numbers across the bottom, are that's the CDC week. So week number 11, the CDC uh, uh, labels the weeks from the beginning of the year. So it starts at the beginning of the March, uh, March and goes right up until today, this week. Uh, and you can see that these are the number of cases that have tested positive back in mid uh, April, actually 50% of all the cases that were done uh, tested positive, coming down to last week were 8%. We have a little blip here, but you can see the numbers are very, very low. The week is not yet finished. This is like watching election night uh, when only 10% of the precincts have come in. So we can't really count uh, that last week, um, but I'm hoping that the, the number continues to go down and down, really very promising moving in the right direction but on the same you know in the same breath it's still out there it's not zero it's not 0.1 percent the cases are still there we still have to look at how ready our hospitals are and they are ready the uh, they have not reached capacity there's plenty of room still in the icu plenty of room in the hospitals uh, for in case we do get a, a second surge. Uh, we do have testing capacity and as you know, testing is available uh, three days a week at uh, Brockton uh, High School. Anyone can call the number and drive up and uh, get tested. And we have phenomenal uh, contact tracing capabilities through the uh, Board of Health uh, and Partners in Healthcare, which is uh, also uh, doing contact tracing in the city. This is just uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, uh, which is the uh, uh, hidden illness and deferred illness. And uh, what I noticed uh, in the uh, emergency department is that uh, it was very unusual that uh, we thought that the uh, ERs in the country were gonna be overwhelmed, like you'd see on TV in New York City with people rolling out the door. But what actually what happened across the country was in the emergency departments about 40% uh, of people, uh, the, the volume was about 40% of what it was last year. People stopped coming to the ER. And that's scary. Uh, it's scary in many ways because they allowed their illnesses to progress. So rather than seeing a a simple case of appendicitis. Now we're seeing ruptured appendicitis that's five days into it and needs a significant operation. Heart attacks where the blockage was not able to be unblocked. Strokes where the stroke was not able to be treated within three hours. And so the downside of all this is that uh, people who are were letting their illnesses go because of fear of coming into the hospital. And I just wanted to stress that um, at this point, we're so far, you know, many, many months into the COVID story right now, that uh, hospitals are really geared up towards making it safe both for the healthcare workers uh, and for the patients who arrive. Um, so this is the, uh, the holy grail of uh, how to take care of COVID. 19. Uh, we need to test to find out if someone is positive. If they are positive, they need to be uh, isolated so they don't infect others. We need to have a very robust contact tracing system so that we can find out who that patient came in contact with in the previous 48 hours before they got sick when they were contagious, uh, and then contact those people so that those people can then quarantine and stay away from others and not infect others. So just to sum it up, uh, as we're opening and as we're reopening the city, it, it's really a common sense uh, approach. The more you interact with others, especially indoors, the longer that interaction, the higher the rate of that COVID-19 is going to spread. When the contact tracers are doing their job, they're going to find out who you were in contact with as a close contact within six feet ten or for a period of time of 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and those are gonna be your uh, contacts. And if you can't 
track the virus, you can't control it. So believe me, if, if someone calls from the state and it'll say MA, Massachusetts, MA, COVID, uh, pick up the phone and, and, and talk to the contact uh, tracer. Um, it, it will be a great help to everyone around you. Uh, and as we're opening up, I just want to throw in my two cents that says, just because you're permitted to go out into the world and make contact with other people doesn't mean you have to do it. And this is especially true for those who are considered to be high risk. So the older population, we say uh, age 65 or older, those with underlying medical conditions, especially uh, uh, obesity, uh, hypertension, well, uh, uh, heart disease, uh, diabetes, uh, Th those people should really still try and play it safe uh, as best that they uh, as best that they can. That's kind of the update of um, uh, where we are, really, kind of as of right now, uh, in the city of Brockton and in the state. And uh, as you know, we participate daily in calls uh, with uh, the Brockton Emergency Management Agency and the uh, Board of Health to try and stay up to date on this. We don't want a day or two or three to slip by without knowing exactly what the data is just so that we can kind of all be together on the same page and making uh, decisions regarding uh, reopening. And there's lots of decisions that are going to be coming down the pike uh, regarding uh, reopening. Absolutely, doctor. That was just wonderful. I mean, those uh, statistics speak volumes. A couple of things that you talked about, again, is the Brockton High Testing Facility. Uh, it is not every day now. It's 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Only Monday, only Wednesday, only Friday. You do have to pre-call in advance. It's a hotline, 844-483-7819. Again, 844-483-7819. Anybody in Brockton or surrounding greater Brockton communities can get tested if they choose to. You don't have to have symptoms. You don't have to have been exposed. You don't uh, have to be an essential worker, anybody that wants to, again, call that number and they'll, uh, they'll accommodate you. And the other thing that Dr. Herman mentioned is partners in health. On your caller ID, when you see MA, COVID team, mass COVID team, that is a legitimate call from partners in health helping our Board of Health to do the, uh, the contact tracing. So um, I just want to thank you, doctor, for your expertise, for your uh, gathering of all the data. It's very, very helpful. Um, you, you've, you know, you've really, um, been a, a superstar helping us get through this. Uh, we hope to God that the second surge is going to be minimal. Uh, but again, I just want to thank you, Dr. Rick Herman, for your friendship, but more importantly, for what you're doing for the community that I call home. So thank you very much. And again, that's Dr. Rick Herman, who is not just an MD, but he is uh, he's, uh, an individual that cares about Brockton. Uh, and, and again, he is the medical consultant for the mayor's office, pandemic consultant as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Herman. Thanks, Mayor. Again, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan. Uh, I just was honored and privileged to uh, be joined by my guest, Dr. Rick Herman, medical consultant, pandemic expert for the city of Brockton. Again, this is Our Brockton. It's the second episode. There'll be many more episodes. Again, I want to thank Brockton Community Access. I want to specifically thank Emma Ridden for, uh, for helping us today. Uh, for anybody that would like to follow this episode and future episodes, again, Brockton Community Access will air this on their channel here locally in the city of Brockton. Also feel free to look at the city's website uh, uh, again, or our Instagram or our Twitter page, or again, the city's Facebook page. Again, it's an honor and privilege to be your mayor of the city of Brockton, and we're gonna work together diligently, collaboratively for a better community that we all call home. Thank you. Mm -hmm.